Howdy folks. Welcome back to the channel. In the last episode, we managed to get the intake off the old 360, and today we're getting ready to finish it off by taking the heads. So stay tuned. Where we left off in the last episode was we knew that we had to take the alternator and a couple of brackets off here because they are attached to the passenger side head. So what we're gonna do now is get the alternator off and a couple of these brackets so that we can finish tearing this thing down. So getting that alternator off wasn't that big of a deal, so now we're gonna pull the valve train, meaning we're gonna take the rockers off and the rocker assemblies and uh, get the uh, push rods out of the way, pull the lifters, and get everything else onto the bench over here. So, let's do it. One thing you're going to want to do when you're removing these is only re only loosen them up a little bit on each one because some of these some of these springs and lifters are going to be in the upright position so there's going to be some extra tension on these so it might take a little bit extra to loosen these up so you'll see those ones there are all loose this, this one here still needs has a little bit of tension on it but just keep going back and forth a little bit rods out and give them an inspection here, make sure they're not bent or war or whatever. These were new when we put them in there. So what I'm up against right now is that I found that there's one uh, head bolt that I cannot use an impact socket on because it is too thick. Second, there's one head bolt that I can't get to because the manifolds are in the way. And thirdly, I don't have a thin walled three quarter socket here because my tool kit, I left it at work. Well, so, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick pause right here. I'm going to get the proper tool that I need, and then we're going to get those manifolds off, and we will pick up right where we're leaving off. So we managed to improvise, and uh, we did get the bolt out that was behind the manifold, and the one that we needed, the shallow, three-quarter inch thin-walled socket, the closest thing that I could find in my toolbox was a 20 millimeter, which is, which really should be a 19, so it's a little bit big. But I managed to get it wedged in here because the problem was the thick walled socket, the impact socket, wouldn't fit between the springs and this little notch here. So I managed to get it in there. It's spinning out. It's the last bolt. So I think we're going to be all right. And on top of all that, my light died. So this head is ready to come out. And one thing you'll note is that there's one of these bolts that's gonna be longer than the others because this is a raised section on the head right here. So that when we go to put that back in, we're gonna know that that long one goes right here. likely be replacing the heads anyway. So, having done all that, I do see some antifreeze dripping down here on the back, but what are the chances of this just lifting right off? We're gonna find out. Pretty good. And if you hear all that noise, that is the antifreeze dripping all over my nice clean garage floor. 
But there's nothing we can do about that right now. So let's get this thing lifted off here. So when we took that head off, well, some antifreeze dripped down inside the cylinder. So it's not, there's nothing wrong with the cylinders other than there's quite a bit of carbon build up inside them. And we're just gonna wipe off the excess antifreeze that leaked down in there. And then we'll peel off this head gasket. Everything looks good here, nothing's really surprising me, other than the carbon buildup. I mean, this, mo this motor doesn't have a whole lot of mileage on it, and it surprises me that there's that much buildup on those uh, brand new pistons that were in there a few years back. So, anyways, not the end of the world. Um, you'll see that we've got some lifters uh, here, and part of the new uh, parts that I ordered for this was some new lifters as well and the only reason why I did that was because I still think I'm getting some valve train noise so we're going to try and eliminate that by putting some new lifters in there as well and uh, then we'll be ready to go ahead and uh, put things back together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the other side get that head off and then uh, we can start taking a look and seeing what they look like as well as looking at the uh, clearance between the top dead center piston and we will rotate it up to top dead center on uh, number one cylinder which is over there and see how much uh, clearance there is between there and the top of the cylinder. So here we go. Okay guys so let's get you up to speed on where we are right now. We are at a little bit of a standstill and we're gonna have to come back to this after we regroup and calm down and uh, think about it for the night, I think. But uh, let's, let's just recap on where we've gotten so far. We started off by getting the air intake and distributor out of the way, then came the carburetor, then came the valve covers, then came the intake, and we are on road to one head on the passenger side. What we are up against at this very moment is this driver's side head. I thought maybe I could do the same as I did on the other side by pulling the manifold back this way, but I didn't take into account that the power steering box is right there and that is not going anywhere. So I did get this bolt out. We've got the one in the middle and we got the one on the end that still have to come out. Everything else is ready. We just gotta get this freaking manifold out of the way. Holy pickle, it's been such a pain in the butt. And I am beyond frustrated with, I busted my knuckle up a little bit, but uh, I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to come back in here tomorrow night. I'm gonna have to clean up my antifreeze spill, jack the car up and get underneath and remove the bolts to that manifold that are holding it onto the exhaust. So I get my hands up in there. And that will be the easy road at this point because now I just cannot get in there with my hands and uh, a ratchet and I just don't have the proper tools here so I'm gonna have to bring my tool kit, which coincidentally was sitting in the shop truck for about a week and I ended up taking it out because I was gonna put it in bubbles. So it's out at the shop and I have the shop truck here. Long story short, I don't have the proper tools. So manifold's gotta come off, and once we get the manifold off, we can then get the driver's side head off the motor. So as we sit right now, we're at a standstill, so I'm gonna come back tomorrow night, and that will be just in a couple of minutes. Holy pickle. We just got done wrestling with that manifold. Uh, we got the two bolts off the flange. We're getting ready to pull it out, and then we get those last two head bolts on the driver's side head. So let's do this, finally. So this should lift right out of there. Now I know that we'll be able to get at this middle one with the gun, but back here, we're probably gonna have to do it by hand. So. And we're linking antifreeze again. That one's going to be a tough one to get at. Uh, 
because there's not a whole lot of leverage right there. And without a wobble socket, I'm not going to be able to, uh, or wobble extension, I'm not going to be able to get on there. Now let's try the hair again. Now we can lift this head off and we'll set it over there on the bench with the other one. Let's hope anyway. Oh yeah. So we gotta get the antifreeze. Soaked up out of these heads, out of these uh, cylinders here. Okay guys, so we are now down to what's called a short block. And that is basically everything from the crank up to the heads. And we are ready to kind of start reversing the operation that we just did. Of course I'm going to clean up these pistons and we're going to pull those lifters out because I do have some new lifters to go with it and we'll make sure that all this silicone gets uh, gets scraped off uh, to make room for resealing the new intake gaskets and get the head gaskets on there. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to try and turn this up to top dead center to see how much distance there is between the top of the piston and the cylinder deck here. So Rather than going and grabbing a wrench and not knowing what size it is, I'm going to try and turn it by hand first and see, uh, see if it turns easily by the uh, pulley here. Oh yeah. So there's top dead center. You'll see that it's starting to go back down again. Well, that's about it right there. We've still got quite a bit of room there so if I have to get those new heads um, planed or decked or whatever you want to call it then we we can do that and not have to worry too much about clearance issues these aren't domed pistons so they're not going to come up and be slapping the uh, valves when the valves open so I think we got lots of room here so we're ready to roll okay and there you have it we are done for now we've got the heads off we've got the block almost ready put the new heads on. We've just got to get those sent away and when we get those back hopefully in about a week's time we can just reverse the whole process get things all back together again. So there is the stock heads and I don't even know what the specs are on these. I did run the casting numbers on them earlier today to find out that they are 178 intake and 0.50 I believe on the exhaust side. So with these new J heads we are going 0.88 on the intake and 0.65 on the exhaust. So hopefully we should see a lot more performance as well as the uh, bigger intake runners on those J heads and uh, get this thing breathing a little bit better. So by the time we get the larger CFM carburetor and the headers on this car, hopefully it'll be able to take in a lot more and get rid of it just as quick and put that power to the rear wheels. So that will conclude this, what would be part three of the Mopar J-Head project. So if you guys are looking to support me in more ways than just watching this channel, 
There are four links in the description box below. I hope you'll check them out. One of them is to my bonfire store so you can get your very own old car auto guy merch. There is a link to Street Six Fans YouTube channel who is my co-host for our Thursday night live stream. There's also a link to TubeBuddy, your YouTube channel helper, as well as my Patreon. If you guys want to support me monetarily, you can donate to Patreon. That will come right directly to me so we can work on more projects like this. Guys, we end every video by saying stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys so much. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.